over the course of Star Trek The Next Generation, we see only two Constellation class bridges, that of the Stargazer in The Battle and that of the Hathaway in Peak Performance. Both were redresses of the earlier Enterprise bridge set seen in Star Trek IV The Voyage Home. As presented, however, they were somewhat limited in both size and suitability given the starships they were supposed to serve. In this short video, we will consider these bridges, and you may well ask what's the problem? It's only fiction, just sit back and don't question it. You'd be right to think so, but analysing these little things promotes critical thinking, problem solving and imagination. We consider how we might solve such inconsistencies in universe. It's like playing in a sandpit or having a round of fantasy football league. There's no practical reason for it other than it being a fun exercise. That's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. What we are faced with is the perennial science fiction problem of inside versus outside. The worst offender here is undoubtedly the Stargazer, the bridge set of which is just the Enterprise D battle bridge with different chairs, consoles, graphics and a paint job. If that curving back wall follows the curvature of the dome shaped exterior then there would not be space for the twin turbo lifts as there was only one protrusion on the model unless there really was meant to be a service corridor running between the bridge and the outer hull. The Hathaway was an improvement, even if it was a further redress of the same set. Here we can suppose the turbo lifts to have been moved forward and to the left and right. There would have been room for such a placement. This bridge set would go on to be the Enterprise D's second battle bridge, the bridge of the Enterprise C and it was even the courtroom in measure of a man. The strange placement of the captain's chair and the console next to it works fine for peak performance as Worf's position emphasises the tactical nature of the exercise, but as the tactical console is behind both chairs we must wonder if Worf's console is helm controlled. In universe, the constellations were comparable to the Constitution II class. Large, well-armed starships carrying crews of between 4 and 500. The bridges of both the Stargazer and the Hathaway, as presented, were not really suitable for so big a ship. Without the aft airlock structure, so evident on the Constitution II class and the Mirandas, the bridge sets needed turbo lift access into the bridge dome itself which would take up valuable space. On the constellations it was most likely that the protrusion at the back of the dome was the shaft of the turbo lift. The full use of the bridge dome therefore was realistic if the set designers had fitted a single central turbo lift. We could have got this, an Enterprise A style bridge but with only the one turbo lift. This feels much more suitable for so large and complex a starship. And if you like this video, why not press the like button, share the video with like-minded friends and subscribe to this channel. If you don't like this video, press the dislike button, share the video with unlike-minded friends and subscribe to the channel anyway.